welcome back to Jason's Macintosh Museum. This is part two in the video series on the Macintosh Classic 2 and in this video we'll be starting the Classic 2 up and demonstrating an old Macintosh application. Uh, in this case it'll be word perfect for the Macintosh. So the Classic 2 is now assembled and ready to go. We have the keyboard and mouse connected. We're using the Apple Keyboard 2 here and we're using the Apple Desktop Bus Mouse over here both of which would have come with the machine when it was new. Although I do believe that in later productions, in, in, in later, um, later in the Classic 2's production run, it would have used the newer um, Apple Desktop Bus Mouse 2 that looks like this. But in this case, given the age of this Classic 2, having been built in late 1991, I believe that the original Apple Desktop Bus Mouse is the correct one for this. And I should also mention that, talking of the keyboard, the keyboard of course has a power button on it, um, but you can't use it to start up the Classic 2, you have to use the switch on the back of the machine. Okay, well the Classic 2 is now up and running, so we'll have a quick look at the system software uh, before we try WordPerfect. So let's have a quick look at uh, this Macintosh, let's see what we have. Okay, we're running system software 7.1 on this, and we have 6 megabytes of memory. Uh, what else do we have? Let's look at the control panels. Hmm. Ah, brightness. So. As I mentioned in the previous video on the color classic, uh, color on the classic two, the classic two, along with the classic and color classic um, compact Macintosh models, all supported software-controlled screen brightness. Now, on the color classic, you could either use the control panel or you could use the front panel buttons to control the screen brightness. But on the classic and classic two, you have to use the control panel, and it's the brightness control panel here. So we can change the brightness like so. And as I also mentioned, the screen used in the Classic and Classic 2 is different from that used in the older black and white Macintosh models, such as the Plus, the SE and the SE30, in that, it, in a sense, it doesn't quite look as, as sharp as the older screens did. Not sure why that is, uh, but it's certainly just as bright. So the rest is all standard System 7 uh, control panels. We've got general controls here. Mm, desktop pad menu blinking. Oh, and uh, it thinks it's 1956 as well. <laughs> because um, on these models of Macintosh, if you take out the PRAM battery, or if the battery goes flat, then the system clock is reset to, looks like, August 1956. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure why that is, but um, that's what it gets set to, so <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. Uh, let's have a look at sound as well. An inter interesting point with the Classic 2. You'll notice that even with the volume turned up to its maximum level, the actual sound level isn't, isn't very high. It isn't as loud as you might expect it to be. And this was actually identified as an issue with the early build Classic 2s because of where the speaker was mounted. The speaker was mounted inside the case, actually mounted to the, to the um, analog power supply board, but with the case installed, then the speaker was completely sealed off from the outside. So in later production um, of the Classic 2, they actually developed a different external case or a rear case that had small cutouts in the side that lined up with the speaker grill so that the speaker um, wouldn't, be, uh, wouldn't be sealed off. But this being an early build model, it has the original case, and so the, the sound level is 
it's good but not great. Okay, well that's about enough for the control panels. There's not much else to really talk about here. It's standard system 7.1. I believe this is a clean install of system 7.1. Um, so I think at this point we will fire up WordPerfect for the Macintosh. And here it is. So this is WordPerfect version 2.1 for the Macintosh from, uh, I believe it's from 1993, this version. And for those of you who don't know about WordPerfect, it was basically a lot like Lotus 123 that I've demonstrated before, which was a very popular business application that is now um, really just a, a footnote in, 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 in the history of, um, of the computer, in that nobody uses it anymore because mainly Microsoft's uh, Word and Excel have more or less um, cornered the market. But in the 1980s, certainly, WordPerfect was very popular. It came out originally for DOS, um, and then they made, a bit like Lotus 123, they then made a Macintosh and then a Windows version. So let's have a look at it. As with most newer applications, I've had to install it on the disk, um, the hard disk, because you can't run it off a floppy. It's far too big for that. So let's start it up. Copyright 1993. Okay, well there's our there's our document, so let's let's type something. So I expect all the uh, all the control all the settings here will be very similar to um, any other word processor. We've got the uh, tab stops along here. We can insert, insert onto the ruler. We've got the justification settings. Okay, we can have uh, we can have columns as well. Mhm. Mm columns. Okay. Type of columns. Line spacing. Mhm. Mm so all, all pretty standard, really, for a word processor. Um, what else do we have? Uh, standard options there. Um, yeah, cut, copy, paste, select all. Oh, okay, you can show the uh, end of line characters. Show codes. Ah, oh, they're probably the codes for the different... Ah, yes, for all the... Uh... Ah, yes. I, I believe that was a feature at the time... Um, specific to WordPerfect, where you could show all of the various internal codes that determined the formatting of a particular document, which is, hmm, quite cool. We'll turn that off. Find and replace, layout, we've got ruler, character, line, paragraph, it's all, it's all pretty standard. Columns, styles, it's, it's actually very advanced for a early 90s uh, word processor, I have to say. Again, I would say this would have more functionality than anybody would even would use even today in the in the average word processor. <laughs> speller, oh, okay, speller, check the source. Date, oh, date, time. Mm, yep, that's the that's what the Mac thinks the date is. August nineteen fifty six. <laughs> Not entirely accurate that. Uh, macro, we can record macros. Very good. Change our fonts. Oh, let's. Change. Hmm. I haven't installed any extra fonts on this machine, so it looks like we have the standard uh, selection here. Ah, oh, can I move? Oh, I can't. Ah, that's that's it. that's one feature that WordPerfect here doesn't have. It doesn't have drag and drop text. Um, the ability to, to drag and drop text in order to move it. Oh, that's a shame. You'd have to cut and paste to do that, I suppose. Yeah. Other different styles. Uh, yes. no, we, we better emphasise uh, this line. I think that's that's very important. Hmm, very important. <laughs> Actually, I would have expected running WordPerfect on a small screen like this would be a, a problem, but it's actually works quite well. I think it was it probably was designed with the older compact Macintosh models um, in mind. Okay, well that's that's about it for WordPerfect. So that is that's WordPerfect 
version 2.1 for the Macintosh from 1993. Okay, I think we're done with that. I quit. I want to save now, I don't want to save. Okay, alright, well that's, uh, that's word perfect. So, at this point, we'll um, shut the Classic 2 down and, and turn it off. So, that was the demonstration of the Macintosh Classic 2 from 1991. So, I hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you for watching.